So chronic subdural hematoma, uh, as we know, um, significant mortality rates, even higher uh, morbidity rates, um, typically affects an elderly, fragile patient population. Our uh, standard treatment for this has always been surgical drainage, burr holes, craniotomy, but recurrence rates in this patient population are quite high, about 15 to 20% average and as high as a third of all patients get a symptomatic recurrence that needs retreatment. And again, this is a, a medically fragile patient population. These are typically elderly people who have other comorbid factors who do very poorly with anesthesia, who do poor with hospital admissions, hospital delirium. Um, and this is predicted to be the most common neurosurgical uh, condition by 2030 due to the aging patient population. So something that as neurosurgeons we see a lot of and something that's always been a little bit problematic from the standpoint of uh, recurrence and retreatment. The etiology, as we alluded to before, is due to the traumatic or spontaneous tearing of bridging veins between the dura and the brain. Um, but then what happens afterwards is a pretty interesting process. There's an inflammatory cycle where inflammatory cells and fibroblasts will migrate to the dura and form membranes around these subdural hematomas. And you'll see oftentimes when you're operating on these and on imaging, multiple layers of subdural membranes around the hematoma, which have mixed age acuity blood products. Now, a patient may fall once, get a subdural hematoma, they come see you a month later, um, it's got some chronic blood, it's got some subacute blood, but there's also acute blood in it. And even though the patient may have had only one ictus to cause the hemorrhage, there's oftentimes lots of mixed age acuity blood. And our theory for this is that these multiple membranous layers that form these, this inflammatory cycle, there's a neovascularization that occurs. And what happens is that these neovascularization blood vessels are very friable and they will spontaneously rebleed even without subsequent trauma. And it's this vicious cycle of rebleeding that causes this mixed acuity blood products, prevents these subdural hematomas from melting away on their own, causes recurrence, causes growth over time. And we believe that this was due to an arterial supply, an arterial process, which is at the, uh, the engine for, for, for forming this. In fact, when we send pathologic analysis of our subdural membranes, we're actually able to see neovasculature of arteries within them. And really the MMA, the middle meningeal artery, is the only artery in the neighborhood of, of this dura, of this uh, subdural membrane, which runs in the dura. And it's been demonstrated histologically as well. This is actually a subdural membrane from one of my patients that I sent to pathology. And you can see, again, these endothelial cells that are very reminiscent of small arterials. So we think that there's an arterial phenomenon um, due to neovascularization and inflammation that essentially keeps these subdurals alive or at minimum uh, prevents them from going away and, and at worst causes them to recur. So our hypothesis about four years ago is that by devascularizing these arterial inputs to the subdural membrane with MMA embolization, we would ultimately prevent that spontaneous rebleeding episodes that occur. And this would allow for subsequent resolution of the subdural hematoma. And we really can use this across the spectrum for hematoma patients. We can use it as a treatment modality for surgical recurrences that occur after surgery, as well as prophylaxis after surgery to prevent recurrence. Even more powerfully, we can use it as an initial treatment modality in lieu of surgical evacuation for patients that have failed conservative therapy. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.